Hey guys, what is up? I am Devil Driven. Today's video, um, just kind of like a concept video, CDPR announced in the homecoming announcement that they wanted to turn Gwent into a battlefield. And uh, these are just a couple ideas that I came up with. Mostly uh, just going over some changes to the leaders, how they work, and uh, how the game starts out a little bit. And then um, also to adding a little bit of a tag to some of the cards so that they do a little bit more. And then uh, some changes to the weather because this scenario they also alluded to possibly just going to two rows apiece, uh, melee and ranged. So this scenario just shows two... Um, two rows for each uh, each uh, each player so uh, these are these are just ideas I came up with in my free time uh, you know let me know what you guys think uh, but let's go over it and uh, see what you think okay here's what I came up with guys the um, I hope you like my board the way I have it set up it's currently on two rows melee and range this is something that CDPR has been um, saying they might want to try so this is what I set up this scenario around. But basically what would happen is instead of your leader being here in your hand, your leader would start on the board. The player that's going first has 30 armor. The player that's going second has 25 armor. As long as these leaders are on the board with armor, certain units would do damage at the end of turn. For one and certain units would boost for one after every turn um, this would kind of give that battlefield effect of you know there's you know we're swinging you know at the end of turn to try and change the tide similar to like reinforced trebuchet um, but the way it would work is the cards that do damage at the end of turn would be labeled currently I'll show you but they're labeled in red as their tag and then cards that are doing boost at the end of turn would be labeled in green the damage over time would take place to where it would attack just the first unit on the left um, so it would it would come into positioning you would always it, it just makes the game a little bit more chess like to where you know okay I want to place this guy here because this guy is going to hit here and you know, I want to place this guy here because it's going to boost this one by one. The boost effect would be similar to light longship, except it would only be one. And only certain cards would be able to gain this ability. I feel that certain cards like, say, Viper Witcher, that's already doing 10 damage off the bat, they would have to have like some kind of a sweet spot to where if a card's doing like 12 strength off the bat, then... 12 strength or more then it would only get this tag so you know something maybe a lot of these cards too are going to be changed too so it's hard to say but going by the current card pool like say a card like Stennis where sometimes you can pull like four cards from it um, it wouldn't have that tag on it um, all gold cards would still be able to do the damage or boost over time and after I ended up making this video, I thought maybe too, because of the way I had the weather set up, certain cards um, could even gain like a yellow tag to where they can gain armor. To, uh, once again, to help alleviate, you know, the ping damage that's coming across your way. So you might hit them for one, but you might be putting on one armor. Um, but the way it would work though is as long as these leaders have these armor values on the board those effects would continue to happen once your leader is has no longer has any armor they wouldn't be doing these damage over time effects you can either you can play your leader early so you would instead of playing it from your hand you would play it from the board it would gain the strength value and then whatever board or whatever row you set your leader on it would continue to gain those effects of damage over time or boost over time or even armor over time I ended up thinking that up after I put this all together but um, that's how it would pretty much work and then we'll, I also changed the way weathers work 
and to coincide with this you know constant ping damage or boost that's going on and then um, also too they said CDPR to kind of fix the coin flip problem certain leaders would have initiative so like a leader like Hensel would always be going first so you can maybe even set your your deck up accordingly knowing that you're going to be playing the first card you know well I maybe I want to put Eratuzas in here and start getting my opponents you know leader down in armor or, you know something like something to that effect I'm sure it wouldn't work that way with Hensel but uh, I think too Hensel's probably going to get changed but um, that's pretty much how it would work. A couple other things that I think should be implemented. Um, the dry pass. If you have, if you dry pass on somebody, I don't think you should draw a card next turn. So it would, you know, your leaders are already going to be set up to where they have, an, you know, initiative and armor. So if you just pass turn one, I don't feel like you should be able to draw a card the next turn. It just... If you watch Challenger, the one the one game between Tailbot and Freddy, which that was an amazing series, um, the one game they both had 13 cards in hand and basically played, you know, one round one round ground, which it was it was a great game, but it just felt super weird that you're playing three rounds and really all you're doing is saying, okay, I don't want to play this round, I just want to go all in the last round. I just it, it just felt really weird so um, I understand you're trying to break your opponent's hand and stuff like that but I just feel like if you're gonna play three if you're just gonna do that then just play one round of Gwent um, but uh, I think spies should still say the same since the leaders you know would have the initiative certain leaders would be able to go you know if you draw your spy cool if you don't you don't um, I think the way this system is set up too, decks that, you know, are just ramping up over time or ignoring the board might actually pay for this. You know, a, a board like, say, maybe Neckers, you know, they're just getting pinged over time. You, your opponent really never re really worries about their board. They just worry about their hand. So maybe something like this would help alleviate those solitary decks. But, um, yeah, I'll go over the cards, um, the card tags, the way I have them set up. And then uh, I made a lot of changes, like I said, to the weather to coincide with this new uh, uh, damage and boost system. So this is the first one. Um, as you can see, I labeled Soldier in red. So when you play this card, not all the copies would do damage. That would be kind of... Well, I guess it could. Um, but... Basically, what it would do is it would, you know, you would play this, two soldiers would spawn, each one at the end of your turn would do two damage. As long as your leader has armor, or if your leader is played on, once your leader's armor is gone, the player's, um, you know, the boost or the strength, whatever leader, or whatever row you play the leader on, they would do that damage after the, the armor is gone. So it would kind of help with positioning and stuff like that. Also, too, I figured with the way these cards work, they can also bring back possibly like the duo and trio combos to, you know, of course you wouldn't be able to do them with like carryover and stuff like that. But, you know, just do something cool with them or maybe, you know, they do an additional ping damage or, you know, similar to like the pockets for crewmen and stuff like that. It would work out. But... If you see this red, you know that at the end of your turn, it's going to do one damage. So I thought that was a pretty cool idea. It helps some of these cards that aren't really that great. And then this one here, same thing. Uh, it's it's labeled in green. So at the end of this turn, as long as there's a unit to you know the right of it, it would boost that unit by one. So you know you'd play this next to a wild hunt hound, it would boost the hound by one at the end of your turn. So you got all this little bit of like things going on to where it's boosting and damaging um, at the end of your turn. So you guys are just basically slugging it out back and forth constantly instead of, you know, a game where you're playing like Consume and they just keep... You could still play that game, but, 
you know, you might be able to uh, out-ping them over time. One thing I will say about the, the ping damage and stuff like that, it kind of hurts Scorch and stuff like that, but um, I just think it makes the game, even when you're not really interacting with your opponent, at least you're interacting with your opponent, with your cards that you're playing. So, like I said, this one, it would boost the unit to the right of it, and then, you know, like I said, there's possibly synergies where they can, you know, add in duos and trios to where maybe you're boosting a little bit more and you got to remove certain things. But I also changed the weather to compensate for how these cards function. So here's what I came up with for the weathers. Um, the way it would work for this, for Frost, it would remove three armor, you know, at, at the end of your turn or the start of your opponent's turn. So the minute they click over, you know, it would give like Wild Hunt Hounds a chance to, you know, start removing the armor off of the leader. Um, it always has a place for it, at least, you know what I mean? Frost would always find a home as long as you're playing it early enough on the leader. So it would remove three armor at the end of, you know, at the end of your turn, start of your opponent's turn. So this is what I did with Fog. I made it to where it's no end of turn attacks for two turns. So you would play this. I don't know if the two turns is right or not, but basically it would it wouldn't do any damage anymore, but it would keep any of the your opponent's cards that they're playing with pings and stuff. They wouldn't be able to do that anymore. They're blind in the dark. They can't see. So they would just um they wouldn't do anything additional if they have that red tag on them. Uh, I'm unsure. I don't. I think the two turns is kind of weak. That might. I, I think it would. Maybe we'll just. We would just make it permanent since it's not really doing any damage. It's. It's just not allowing damage to come your way. I. I would probably just leave it on the board to where worst case scenario it wouldn't. You know, it wouldn't do any damage, but you wouldn't be dishing out any strength either. So this is what I did with Rain. Uh, same thing. There would be no end of turn boost for two turns. And since units two are going to be possibly row locked, you're going to know which which rows are going to have the boost units, which rows are going to have the damage units. So you can strategically place these. I do think, now that I'm looking at this, I do think that the uh, two turns is kind of weak. Uh, it should just stay on the board. And, uh, you know, if they don't remove it, they don't remove it. If they remove it, you know, it's... Uh, their their stuff's going to continue to ping or or you know boost depending on what what you put on their side of the board but it it basically just it keeps that little army at bay you know what i mean it's like it it doesn't do damage cuz i always thought that was kind of weird that like you know oh there's these big bad soldiers and like it's raining uh. <laughs> so i figured this would uh you know it kind of makes sense to have these just be low tempo but they 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 keep certain things at bay so now we have our silver weathers and effects i did forget a couple of them like um, mahakam ale and stuff like that but uh this is what i came up for dragon dream you would it would still play the way it does we'd play it on a row and then the next person that plays a spell it would deal four damage to four units so it'd be 16 point play it's not the best but it's pretty decent um, and, and there's cards where you can replay it you know with like you know Yennefer Enchantress and stuff like that so I think that's the one that that replays it but this one's pretty self-explanatory the other ones I made them a, a lot different I actually like uh, the way I did Pit Trap so this is what I did for Skellige Storm um, you would play it on the row and all boosting units would do damage instead so if you had three Three wild or uh, wild hunt navigators next to each other. They're going to do one damage to everything to the right of it, instead of, you know, being able to boost. They would damage instead. That's what Skellige Storm would do now. If you played this on a row with a light long ship, instead of it boosting by two, it would kill itself by two. Um, these ones would be suit. This one, uh, to me, like the sil you would save your weather clears for the silver and gold weathers because they're just going to be devastating if you can't um white frost it's a little bit underpowered it, it would remove uh 
six armor at the start of your opponent's turn. You could play this. Um, I don't know how you would pull it, but you would basically want to. It, it would. It, it's basically to play to to start ripping on your your opponent's leader. Um, real quick you'd have to have a board presence first but the way i have it set up is frost would go after the armor um fog would go after strength type things where it wouldn't let strength damage come through um and then rain would eliminate any type of boosting effects that's how i went with it um next one pit trap the way i got it set up it would anything that's a damaging unit would damage themselves by two so it would still do the damage the other side but it would also damage itself by two so it would it, it, it it's basically a trade of one you would you would lose one they would lose one basically um well they'd lose two but they damaged you for one so it was it, it puts them at a negative one so if they put a whole bunch of stuff on one row that's doing one damage they would end up doing one damage to themselves on a whole bunch of things, depending on, like I said, what these tags are. Um, but I, I, I think this is cool because it's like they're kind of in this like trench with all this crap and they're trying to fight their way out. And of course, if you're doing that, you're going to get all beat up. So this one I think might be like, it depends on how many cards there would be that would do the damaging effect at the end of turn like i said certain cards i don't think you'd be able to give it to them um gold cards of course would do it um but like certain certain bronze cards i don't think you should be able to get bonus effects on top of it like say viper witchers because I, I just think that they're already pretty you know overtuned so them being able to do additional damage i think it would just be just an additional tag they can add to certain units to make it a little bit better. And then we got our, our two gold weathers. I just have it set up to where they just do three damage to... They're, they're basically set up the same way, but they just do one more damage. And they go to lowest strength. And, you know, of course, Ragnarok would be the highest strength. Um, and then the way I had clear skies set up, it would only clear one row. So it wouldn't do that whole weather clear thing so that they weren't totally dead. There's only two rows now. And if you wait to play clear skies on or first light on something like that, um, you shouldn't be able to clear a whole a gold weather with just a bronze card. I think that's BS. So it clear skies would just basically clear one row now instead of two. But that's the way I got the weather set up, um, and then how the games, you know, would take place. They're just my ideas. Like I said. Um, let me know what you guys think. I just think that the way the game is set up currently, it's kind of messed up, but it kind of like you need that smork mentality. There's nothing there in the beginning of the board. So I just feel that there needs to be something on the board for reactive cards to be able to target. It just, the way it's set up right now, it just, it stinks when you have like cards you want to play, but you can't knock off any armor, or you, you know, you you can't you can't play them because you're not going to get good value out of them because they're something that are, you know, you're trying to damage your opponent. So, I don't know, that's what I came up with. Let me know what you guys think, um, if there's any other improvements I can make, or um, if you want me to keep going with this idea and, and start making some of the other cards for it or whatever, but let me know what you guys think. Like always, thank you, thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time.